Hey guys, it's me, 80 Smurf before. So today, guys, I'm gonna do my quick Champions League reaction to Manchester City three, Bayern Munich nil, and then we're gonna also do the uh, Benfica nil inter two. So if you're new out here, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. Comment below your thoughts, and obviously consider becoming a member of the channel if you're new out here. And uh, yeah, like I said, guys, all the good stuff, man. So today, let me explain how this is gonna work. So we're we'll doing a quick video. This will be around probably around five to ten minutes ish, and then tomorrow we'll be doing a live stream. We'll go in depth. I'll have some panelists. Come on, you know, some Benfica fans, Inter fans, Man City fans, Bayern Munich fans. I'll try to get all representation tomorrow on the big live stream tomorrow. To recap all the games of this week in the Champions League. So, let's start with the first game, which we have here is Man City 3, Bayern Munich nil. So, when we were looking at the lineups with my friend, I was looking at the Man City lineup. I was thinking to myself, what kind of lineup is this? Why is John Stones playing at CDM? I was very, very, very stunned and very bewildered with that. But knowing how Pep Guardiola is, it might be a tactical decision, you know? And he likes to overthink with his lineups in particular, you know? And traditionally, Man City play a 4-3-3. But this season, they've been playing more of a 3-2-4-1-ish. And it's actually been working really, really well, guys. As for Bayern Munich, I was not really surprised. It was pretty much expected 11. I think the only real surprise was the fact that Tuchel is generally known for playing a back three. Um, and he actually played a back two today, which was something very interesting. And obviously, I guess another big question mark was the fact, where's Chopo Moting and where's like Mane and Muller, right? Well, actually, Chopo Moting is actually injured for a few weeks. And obviously, Mane is not fully recovered. And I don't know why Thomas Muller didn't start. Because for me, personally, I think Thomas Muller should have started in place of Gnabry. Because Gnabry, for me, was really poor. Let's talk about the first half. Man. Manchester City, right from the words go, they were pressing Bayern. They were pressing the heck out of Bayern Munich. And it took a while for Bayern to really get a hold of the game. They were never really able to create any high-quality, clear-cut chances. Manchester City kept pressing. They kept trying to get the ball. And Sommer actually um, had to make some good saves because Sommer was actually really good for Bayern. In fact, I would actually argue he was probably Bayern's best player in the day, which is actually saying something when your whole team is generally bad. And that first goal, man, was a stunning goal from Rodri. You know you have to do something special to beat a keeper, right? And the saying is true, guys. It's not when you, it's not how many you score. It's when you score. When you score is so critical. And I feel like Rodri, for me, is the type of player that just took the game upon himself. Like, you know, he always scores these kind of amazing goals. Remember the goal he scored against Arsenal last season at the Emirates and a come from behind victory in a very controversial win, albeit. But um, Rodri, man, it was a fantastic goal. Then, the, and then as a half one on, man, Man City... Had more and more opportunities. Sommer made some brilliant saves. That chance at Gundogan, man. I don't know how Gundogan missed that chance. He it was a brilliant save from Sommer, I believe, with his, with his feet. And Sommer, for me, was incredible. Because the thing is, like, I think for the first 20 minutes or so, he, was getting, he wasn't that great, man. He wasn't that great. And, you know, he was getting pressed. But uh, as the game went on, he was really, really good. And for, uh, for Bayern Munich, man, Leroy Sané, man. There was that chance he should have scored in the second half, man. And the thing is with Bayern Munich is that... What I've said before against PSG is that despite the fact they were comfortable against PSG, their attack didn't look that great. And I think PSG, for me, very much underperformed. And you can see how their Bayern wingers on the day are very mediocre. Like, I'm sorry, Leroy Sané, he's a quality player, amazing player. His finishing is bad. Coleman, for me, he is a good player, but the thing is, Coleman isn't consistent. Musiala, for me, was struggling on the day. And Gnabry just didn't work at striker. It just wasn't a great idea from Tuchel. I understand why he wanted to do that. As like a false nine kind of thing. But it just didn't work out. You know. Um, and obviously Kimmich and Goretzka had a decent game. Davis was getting cooked man. Davis was really bad. And then the second goal man. Was a disgrace. Was an absolute disgrace from a Bayern point of view. Because Upo Meccano man. This was a guy I've been praising a lot right. But I even said this to myself. I even said this yesterday on RDS's channel. Guys check out his channel by the way. I said that as good as they have been. They are error pro. And they do have an error in them. And look, that Upa Makano, man, he should have done so much better. Holland pressed, got the ball, played it to Bernardo Silva, which is a brilliant, brilliant header there from Bernardo Silva to make it 2-0. And I knew from that point, once the second goal went in, I knew the tie was done. Because I just knew that Bayern were going to score because there was no sign that they were going to score. And it was just a matter of time where Manchester would score the third goal. And the third goal eventually came when Holland scored the third goal. It was a fantastic goal there. Brilliant assist from John Stones there. And Manchester City, man, they they demolished Bayern Munich. You know, Sommer, he was incredible in the day. He made some really, really good saves, I believe, on, I think, um, I think who was it? Rodri had another chance there. I think Grealish also had a chance there as well. I can't remember all the chances at the top of my head, but there were so many chances that Sommer saved. 
And for for Ederson, now Ederson was good early in the first, second half. I think Ederson actually had to make some good saves early in the second half. But really, as the game went on, man, Bayern Munich just couldn't handle it. And Manchester City were just able to get through the cutting edge. And Manchester City were just clinical in the day. And it's 3-0, man. I don't see how Bayern is going to come back. Because the thing is, Bayern can't score three. But is there a guarantee they keep a clean sheet at the Allianz Arena? I don't think there is. And so I think Manchester City, you could probably say they're probably in the semifinals of the UEFA Champions League. Now, we all know Manchester City have been very shocking on the road. Generally, on the road is where they tend to screw things up. But even with that being said, I don't expect City to lose 4-0 at the Allianz Arena. Now, if it does happen, you guys can clip this and I will humbly apologize. But as of now, I don't see how Bayern Munich will advance. It is going to be very, very difficult. And for Manchester City, man... They're practically in the semifinals, man, of the UEFA Champions League. And yeah, now let's go talk about the other match that also happened simultaneously. And now, obviously, this match, I didn't get to watch as much as the other game because I was more focused on the other game. And Benfica, man. Benfica, man. They're going to look at themselves as that, how did we not score in this game? How? Because they were great in this game, man. Benfica were actually great in this game. The issue was that Onana has been incredible. For me, Onana is the reason why Inter is in this quarterfinals. Because had Andanovic be playing in goal, there is no chance. And I mean no chance had Inter make the quarterfinals. Because Onana, for me, has been that critical. And for Benfica, man, there were so many chances. I'm looking at Grimaldo, a chance he should have scored. Then I'm looking at Joao Mario, the Rafa Silva, you know, etc. These kind of players, man. And Benfica, for me, man, they just haven't been great. They just haven't been great when it comes to finishing. And I'm looking at Joao Mario in particular, man. A player that is captaining the team on the day. He had a bad performance today. Obviously, he gave away the penalty, which was a pretty, pretty harsh penalty, in my personal opinion. But a penalty was given nonetheless. And let's talk about the first goal, man. What a cross that was for Bastoni to Barella. Barella scoring the header there. Brilliant, brilliant goal there. And from that point on, man, Inter, man, they were still staying defensively solid, defensively firm. And you look at Inzaghi, man. Look at the players he can bring off the bench. Joaquin Carrera, Lukaku, Gossens, Ambrosio, Stefan de Vrij, you know. And I look at Benfica and you have David Neres that could come off the bench. You know, Verissimo that could come off, you know. The thing is, I think for Benfica, they really miss Ba. I think Ba and Otamendi were really, really big misses on day. I think Ba, for me, is a great, great right back. He did, he's an excellent right back. And Otamendi, of course, was suspended for the game. So it was always going to be difficult for him to up um, to do it and I, I think for Inter man it was a big big win Lukaku coming off the bench and for me I just don't see how Benfica can get back in this tie because the thing is uh, for Benfica man as good as they were and as good as chances they were Rafa Silva only had the only shots during the first 45 minutes and I just think that for me the thing with Inter Milan is that they haven't been great in Syria they haven't been great in Syria they're struggling right now they haven't won a game since I think March 15th it's been shocking um and, yeah, I mean, it was just crazy, man. And then, obviously, um, Dumfries also had a big chance as well, I believe. Joao Mario. Um, and, yeah, man. So, it was a great, great effort, man. And Onana, man, look at the amount of saves he made. He made two saves, man. Especially the save right at the end could have been massive. Because had Benfica scored right at the end, we could have had ourselves a very interesting second leg. But now, with that save being made, I don't see how, I don't see how Inter don't score at home. Because they're going to score at least one at home. And even if they don't score, because the thing is with Inter Milan, is that as bad as their form has been, their defense has been solid. Their defense has been money. Their defense has been absolute rock solid. And that's why I say that Inter Milan, that's why I say that they, you can't write them off. You know, And that's why people need to realize that League and Champions League don't always come hand in hand. It's not that simple, right? Oh, because you're doing bad in the League means you're going to do crap in the Champions League. It doesn't always work that way. Like that. It's about can you get it done in a knockout stage competition? And Simeon Inzaghi is that kind of manager that can get it done. As for Roger Schmidt, it's a top top vote for Benfica. But hey, at least with Benfica, they're in a great position to win the league. Whereas Inter Milan, they're they're not gonna win the league. And you don't really think they're gonna win the Champions League. So, you know, it's gonna be very interesting to see how the second leg pans out. So I think that's all for me for today, guys. I hope I did a good, concise review of the both games. Please let me know if I miss any major talking points because I probably did. If I did, please let me know in the comments below. If you made it this far, please hit that like button if you hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're new on here. Comment down below your thoughts, comment section below. And also make sure you guys check out my other platforms in the description below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.